Hello guys, my name is Ora Zub and I'm currently visiting very small, unknown for most of the people town Gubelicha in eastern Ukraine. Actually, I didn't know about its existence by myself, but came here as a part of a bigger trip to see the real situation in the areas which are closer to the front line. And as we see, Gubelicha is very, very typical working town dating back to the Soviet Union. So these kind of houses were built in the 60s and it doesn't even feel like a village. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is a factory, it's for beetroots, yes, and people were sent here to live in these houses and also work on that factory. There is like a local cultural center. It serves as the main point for people to meet. We're gonna come there before, afterwards, but now let's walk inside the yards. It's a nice autumn, nice weather over here and we are entering a very small yard of a three-story buildings. That's we are seeing how very calm situation is over here. The benches to rest, somebody has a car, there the things are hanging as you can see somebody watched them and on the backdrop there's another part of the factory hello we have a representative of polska akcja humanitarna and usaid hello mrs nadia nice to meet you so let's go and see some of the residents how how they live and what do you do let's go inside so we are entering guys this kind of building let's go Okay, this is the yard. Ah, and we are coming to meet some of the elderly people from Hubelicha. So Mrs. Nadia is coming here, yes, to help uh, local residents. And there are some uh, notes, yeah, to, to read, to paint. Okay, nice. How, how to deal with stress, how to try to do some basic help and so on. Let's go inside, let's see what's there. Opa. Hello, Mr. Serhi, husband. Hello, hello. Jak was prave? Super. О, телевізор, ТВ is working. Ага, you are watching some TV and life goes on. This is the conditions where people live, guys, you see. Papa, bye-bye. Oh, wow, guys. That's where the conditions in which many people in Ukraine live. As you've seen, what can I say? It's pretty sad. But thanks to Polska, Polish action, humanitarian action, that Nadia is representing here. These people at least receive some kind of help psychologically and also there were some financial distribution. In the meantime, now let's try to walk a little bit around the city and see how is the situation. Dobry den. Dobry den. People are chill, there is some shop and other residential areas like this. Opa. Uh -huh. So this is the dormitory and guys, actually Mrs. Nadia is one of the internally displaced people. She came from Kramatorsk, you came from Kramatorsk. And now there are a few hundred internally displaced people in this town. Yes, yeah? so um, some of them receive help from other organizations that arrive here. But otherwise they just find a place to, to live, to rent and you know, stay here a little bit further from the front line. You might be wondering what is this? And these are just small private warehouses of people. Yeah, that's how they were stored their things. Very, very basic conditions. We are lucky with the weather and uh, looks like we just arrived to one of the main playgrounds of the city, of the town rather to say, yeah. So all of those houses were built according to the plan and you know young families were coming during the Soviet Union to work on this large beetroot factory. Now there are just a few kids playing with older people, the rest are probably left. That's the situation guys. 
Okay, let's carry on. Cat is also very curious what we are doing here, yeah? Oh, he wants to pet. Okay. Just check out, even like in such not easy situation, local residents try to take care of their gardens. There are some flowers over there, yes? And uh, they are hanging their things in a very creative way. So people carry on, as you can see. I just was asked with the people from the windows, hey, why are you filming? What are you doing? Can we trust you? I told no. My job is to spread the message and to show what's happening in Ukraine in order to receive more help here. So people were worried and basically in such small towns, people are very, very desperate for many things because there is no job. Fortunately, there is still some food. I'm not sure what will be the heating situation here, but this village is an example of standard situation in Eastern Ukraine, guys. Very, very difficult conditions, unfortunately. This is uh, the local kindergarten for children. So uh, you see it's also dating back to the Soviet time. It's clearly written over here like aliens like people from not from here are not allowed to enter so i will not disturb them but basically we can see how beautifully it is uh, organized here and yeah children are staying inside this lady probably will shout on me now Dobry den. this lady is a director of the kindergarten she were basically very curious what am i doing i had to show my press license don't worry because people are really, really stressed over here and she also were complaining about the tough life here, this and that. So guys, we are back on our square and uh, the director of the kindergarten just pointed out to this former dormitory that it's also in a very poor condition, as you can see. Basically, the building is getting destroyed and, you know, like, what else can I say? Just fucked up. Nothing else, nothing else. Check this out as well. It looks like, first of all, yeah, this is the small roundabout in this square, yeah. And it looks like it used to be a functioning fountain in a very picturesque place as it once was maybe half a century ago. So we are back to our cultural center. By the way, it's written here Juvilaini, which means it's like anniversary of something. And as the lady from the kindergarten just told, it was built actually in a very interesting style, as you can see, of like uh, functionalism of Soviet time. It was built for the 100th anniversary of the birth of Lenin in 1970. Yes, yeah, so basically Oh, that's the way. Okay, let's 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 go inside and see how it is over here. Cat will show us the way. So uh, nothing much changed here probably since the 70s, as you can see. Very rustic everything. There are some humanitarian stuff for people probably with pictures, and we enter inside in this corridor. To the office of our colleagues okay there it is hello hello i see that the, the work is going very actively <laughs> ladies are suing and they're having fun very nice so as i told this is the office of polish humanitarian action and their like main profile is delivering psychological help to local residents and also internally displaced. Currently they assist over 100 people, usually elder, and uh, the previous visit was an example how they are trying to work with them. Also those ladies or older, other old people who can actually move, they are always welcome in this office for some socializing. And as we see now, their main uh, thing is suing altogether. 
which makes it also very, very interesting. Very nice hobby, actually. Uh -huh. And I must say, uh, you know, maybe it looks very insignificant, but these are the examples how different international organizations are actually helping Ukraine. And uh, soon there will be a conference in Zheshul, World for Ukraine, where I, I participate in the organizing, where we're gonna gather many different organizations to talk about different ways to support Ukraine. It will be in December. Uh, below this video, there will be a link where you, you can get to know more about this conference. So please join if you're involved in any type of humanitarian activity.